And uh, again, excited to be here. I'm uh, Stefano. I'm a generative artist, and I was part of the second cohort of uh, uh, here Vertical Crypto Art Residency. Uh, you might know me uh, from Artlocks. Uh, last year, I started my NFT career there uh, with uh, the season three uh, curated series. I my uh, project was called uh, Framenti at the time. Then later in August, when there was like the all NFT craziness, I released also Rinascita. And that kind of kick-started my career in this space. And uh, yeah, that's more or less it. I will also say that uh, Vertical Crypto Art is amazing. The second cohort uh, experience was incredible. I learned so much. And uh, yeah, glad to meet you all. Thank you. Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. And yeah, if you have any question about anything, more than happy to answer those. Hey, Stefano, uh, Dylan here. Uh, I'm just checking out your website and looking at your work. I'm not that familiar with art blocks. I, I'm kind of aware, or I'm you know I'm aware of it but I haven't been on it or used it particularly. I'm, I mean, your work is beautiful. I'm quite taken with your, your website, to be honest. It's wonderful that you have all of your NFTs incorporated natively into your website. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. And actually my website is uh, a work in progress. I created that uh, uh, even before NFT started. And uh, so they are actually static images, but something I will be working the next month will be integrating a little bit more about uh, my NFTs directly there, especially art blocks, because I don't think it's mentioned anywhere in the site. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess uh, website, very important thing. Uh, you should have definitely one. Uh, it might be your... Uh, uh, entry point about everything probably it was already mentioned in one of your classes particularly for me I think it was uh, the turning point because um, it dealt quite a lot with the Artblocks application that at the time was quite uh, restrictive and selective so having uh, I guess um, a very good web presence especially on the website and uh, I tend probably to curate more web my website than my social medias uh, it's something I believe it's important. And regarding Artblocks, uh, it's a generative uh, art platform. Uh, you can uh, code anything in JavaScript, upload your algorithm there. And then uh, their technology will enable collector to mean directly from the algorithm. So it's kind of a, a slot machine to a certain degree because uh, we do not know which uh, pieces will get minted at the time, similar to FX Touch, if you're more familiar with that. But uh, basically, when a collector purchases a piece, it will press a button. The algorithm will run behind the scene associated, being associated with an hash that uh, it's uh, written on the transaction of the, on the blockchain, and that will give us the result. Yeah, it's quite... Um, I think you're probably one of the few NFT artists that I've come across who doesn't have a link tree, you know, a, a string of yep. acronyms and, you know, s links to different sites in your Twitter bio. Um, so, yeah, it's super interesting. I've kind of been, I guess, like leaning further and further away from my website over the last year. So, yeah, it's it's super interesting. It's quite a refreshing take on how to present yourself in the space. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very good point. A lot of people prefer link trees and maybe, um, let's say, a faster way to go to their uh, uh, marketplaces like OpenSea Foundation and so on. Personally, I always try to have some kind of bandwidth to uh, more like a, this uh, barrier of entry because before people could purchase my work. I think I tend to do that more to uh, give more space to the art and less about uh, sales and so on. But uh, I'm not sure how effective that is. Uh, for sure, I think uh, that's something people notice and um, kind of appreciate, especially in the traditional art world. Um, that's something where I'm also a bit investing. I want to position myself a bit better in the traditional art world uh, because I feel uh, NFTs are great. But on the other hand, uh, currently, there's a lot of potential there, especially 
uh, for traditional art collectors and so on. And it helps to have, uh, let's say, a strong website uh, instead, more like a sales-oriented website when you go to discuss with uh, galleries or uh, uh, museums and so on. At least that's my take. Hey, Stefano, this is Claudia here. Um, I was just looking a bit at your background and see that you um, did like web design, um, like UX design, and a lot of like different kind of um, design things. Uh, how would you say that your um, background has influenced your practice now? Yeah, thanks, Claudia, for the question. And it's uh, very spot on. Um, I think it's uh, my my current uh, artistic practice is actually the culmination of my background. Uh, I started coding when I was a very little kid. I think I was eight years old. And uh, it was probably for me uh, something amazing that uh, made me decide straight up that I wanted to pursue a career in tech. But then the more, more I grew up, the more I understood that uh, I didn't like only the technical part, but I also liked like kind of the design more uh, the experience part of it and uh, I kind of got more involved in design and so on but uh, the more I was working in the field the more I was frustrated with clients and projects and so on because they felt a bit soulless sometimes and one day I kind of uh, uh, woke up literally in the middle of uh, from like uh, this uh, this uh, thought came from the little bit literally the middle of nowhere in my mind and I decided to learn generative art. And as soon as I started learning about generative art, I was hooked. It was kind of the, the perfect place for my passion uh, being uh, technology and, uh, and tech and uh, design and visual uh, things uh, were meeting in the, the perfect place. And uh, yeah, I got uh, more involved and more involved and uh, it was kind of a, a liberation for me because I found a, uh, a practice that could uh, make me happy doing the things I was already doing for work, but without the stress of having clients and deadlines and so on. And um, that's, let's say, the, the story. But on the other hand, to answer your question as well, nowadays, uh, this kind of uh, experience I had in my uh, previous life, uh, as I like to call it, it was it's uh, it's very helpful for uh, for how to position myself for in, in this space. I, if I need to code anything, I can do it myself. If I need to promote myself, I can always have, let's say, the, the reference point when I was working in a more startup environment or, uh, or things like that. So it's kind of uh, sometimes maybe I also think of my uh, artistic profile a bit from a more too much from a business perspective. But on the other hand, it helps me to detach a bit and take myself a bit more seriously, especially when I'm uh, talking and discussing collaboration or so on. Gotcha. That's very cool. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Dylan, <laughs> it was eight. And actually, it's a fun story because I started... Uh, uh, kind of uh, creating fake UIs uh, for tricking my mother and giving me the password of my computer because I was spending too much time in the computer. So I was, I had like a, a thing they were locking my computer after a while. But I, I was frustrated with that because I wanted to, to spend more time in the computer. Uh, and at the beginning, I started kind of uh, leveraging uh, like Visual Basic or something like that to create like an infinite amount of windows. Uh, so the computer would lock and I tried to spy the password while my mother was uh, like inputting it. And then uh, I straight up created like a phishing UI to, to literally still steal the password. And, but yeah, that's how I started. Nowadays, I don't do any more those kind of stuff. That's that's so amazing. I love that that you were like doing what eight year old kids do, but with code. That's absolutely brilliant, Stefano. <laughs> yes.
I think it would be nice, Stefano, if you want, of course, to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, how the residency helped you during, you know, uh, your uh, artistic uh, growth. So if you want, of course, to talk about, uh, I think it would be a nice uh, topic of conversation with our uh, uh, residents uh, in our ongoing cohort. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So. Um... Where to start? I think, uh, first of all, the whole team uh, behind Vertical Crypto is amazing and we're super supportive, the mentors uh, as well. I didn't uh, leverage as much as I would like to uh, the, the mentors because unfortunately I was still uh, working full time when I attended the residency, but I'm still catching up with, um, with the lessons. And uh, I think... Uh, Hearing the, the stories and the perspective from the people that uh, literally contributed building the reality we're living in, it's amazing. It's, uh, it has no price, uh, the experience you, you can get out of the residency. And uh, from an artistic perspective as well, it made me uh, confront myself with the other artists in the cohort. And it was uh, very, very inspiring seeing the different techniques they were using. But also then one of my favorite activities, I'm not sure if you already have done that, probably yes, the, um, uh, the Art Critic with uh, Harry Martin, uh, where we had this uh, very safe environment where we could uh, share feedback and what the, the art were saying to us. And it was amazing how, uh, like seeing the reaction of people to my art, but as well sharing what... Uh, uh, a piece of art from another artist inspired me, and sometimes it was like they were exactly trying to convey that, and uh, that's amazing. That's kind of the feeling you cannot express with words, uh, but you can definitely uh, communicate and express with uh, with visuals or with your art and your voice. Then, of course, the um, the final event was uh, so much fun uh, with the the Arium spaces and uh, the wall auction. Uh, we had uh, also one artist that was doing a, a live performance, uh, a music live performance, and later um, uh, there was also a, a 3D building uh, performance, uh, like an after party. So that was uh, very, very cool. And uh, I guess one thing of uh, one of the things I like the most about Vertical Crypto is uh, kind of the community there's behind. Unfortunately, I and not taking as much part as it would like because my schedule uh, these days is quite busy. But on the other hand, uh, I think if you tap into the community, there's so much uh, potential for collaboration and creating something together that's uh, incredible. And uh, it's, it's very genuine, very positive. And it's not always that you can find this kind of environment and safe space in the, in the crypto world. So that's definitely something I, I really appreciate by, from Vertical Crypto. Maybe also one question for you all. It's uh, what's your artistic discipline? I'm curious to understand uh, how the, the group is built. So maybe I can also, uh, if you have question about generative art or anything else, uh, more than happy to, to hear a little bit more about yourself as well. Hi, Stefano. Hi, it's, it's Mike. Um, I've got a question, like, I had to look at your website as well, and, you know, I, th I think a lot of generative artists do this now, that they um, sell prints. Um, yes. Like, when you, when you create something, do you, have, do you have that in mind? Or, or is it, um, you know, because you would obviously assume that generative art is on the computer, and, and that's sort of the natural habitat. Um, mm -hmm. But, but is that's the, like, I don't know what's the, what's the balance. I'm just intrigued by that, I think. Yeah, that's the perfect question to ask me, especially because uh, when I create generative art, uh, my focus is always on not print, but imagining the piece uh, on a wall. That's probably the, the very first uh, thing I do whenever I start coding a piece is how do I envision that it's uh, on a wall, printed in static, uh, framed, and that uh, really influenced my practice because I 
I try probably the the trick I use is imagine myself very close to the work or very far from the work, and I want to to have different kind of um, elements and details jumping out depending on the, dis- the viewing distance, and that's probably something you do not really do on the computer. And um, and yeah, that's kind of my north star. Uh, then printing, printing is an amazing experience and also quite hard to do. Um, and uh, be aware, maybe this is uh, something you will be more uh, lucky than me. But uh, when I did my drop, uh, the, the second drop for Inashitown Art Blogs, people started reaching out to to purchase as well signed print copies. But uh, don't uh, underestimate how hard it is to to have, let's say, uh, the logistic uh, capabilities to to fulfill even uh, fifty printed copies. It's it's quite hard. Uh, maybe in the US it's a bit easier uh, because there's kind of uh, shipping is uh, cheaper as well. It's easier probably finding a printer, so on. But uh, I'm living in Italy and it was a logistic nightmare. That I'm, I'm probably uh, so the drop happened in August, and uh, I started shipping the first prints uh, literally two weeks ago, because I needed to set up a company and uh, all the taxation, the, uh, the tax duties, and so on from like exportation and importation about prints, and it's very very complex uh, and <laughs> something I learned along the way. So don't uh, underestimate how how much of an effort is doing something like that. And maybe uh, a piece of advice or something that really helped me was uh, asking for help. Uh, I was lucky to find a good friend of mine that was kind of uh, finishing a chapter of his life because he was just uh, uh, selling his uh, previous company and was ready to take on a new adventure. And I asked him if he would would be interested in supporting me as a manager. And he said, yes, yes. And now I have this person that's kind of handling all the more like the business part of the of being an artist, and that's amazing because uh, first of all, it's a it's a first person uh, that uh, serves as a screen and protects you from all the collaboration offers and so on, where you uh, where you have like this person that just handle the first layer, and it's a filter that's uh, that gives me a lot of ability to to dedicate myself more to the artistic practice and so on. But uh, uh, that's from the practical aspect. But another thing that's uh, very, very valuable for me is having someone I trust that can share my perspective, my point of view, and hearing as well their point of view. So it's, uh, it's something like uh, we became this team where uh, we discussed pretty much everything together, even like the curation of the art. And uh, it's super, super helpful to to rely on somebody else and uh, have somebody else there supporting me uh, from not only like a personal level, but as well a business one. Because sometimes uh, I tend to say yes to anything that comes at me, but then uh, it's hard to keep up and keep track of everything. So. If you can, uh, if you reach a point in your career where you feel like you are overwhelmed by everything, uh, my advice will be uh, take a step back and find somebody you trust to to support you and uh, divide and conquer all the tasks. And Jean, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Uh... Okay. Can I follow up one, one, okay. one thing? You know, like when you say, when you say you know you you go really close and you step far far away to to mm-hmm. get different different experiences, um, when you do your prints, do you then like are they one size or, or I I always imagine if it's like a if it's a ge- like generative art that you can basically you could print it in you know ten by ten centimeters, but you could also probably print it by hundred by hundred, you know, and, and not lose any quality. I might be wrong. Yeah. So do do you play with that as well with with um, different output? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my workflow enables me to scale and reduce the uh, the, the output uh, in any dimension, and uh, I tend to favor like large prints because uh, my work usually is a very very textured, and uh, so if you print it in a in a larger dimension, it's easier to to like kind of uh, see all the details. 
Uh, but yes, it's, it's something you want to keep in mind if you're interested in prints that uh, something uh, printed in a small size might not be uh, good to, to look at in a larger size and vice versa. And uh, it's also one of my probably main frustration with uh, having the work only digital, especially on um, on platforms, because uh, often like the preview is very small and then you do not get to appreciate the full details and texture of a work. And uh, in monitors as well, it's a bit hard to, to kind of convey one on one that the size I had in mind for the piece in the real world. Of course, with monitors like TVs, it's getting better, but uh, still nothing beats like the printed work. Thank you very much. Cheers. And yeah, I was saying, uh, Jean, uh, yeah, it, uh, thank you for reading that. And uh, it took quite a, quite a gap at the time because uh, it was literally coming out of uh, a diff difficult year. And uh, it was before having the success in the NFT work. Uh, and I just shared openly that kind of idea. But it stuck a chord with many, many people. And I'm, I'm very glad I did that because it helped create a new connection. But also uh, being out there a bit more with my emotion and feelings uh, helped me be more transparent about all of that, those as well with people in my real life. And uh, like, in, and uh, yeah, so he, don't don't be afraid of sharing your ideas and voice with everybody. It takes uh, quite uh, a lot of effort, but uh, baby steps. Uh, and uh, personally, I'm so glad I did that. I just want to say that I was looking at your why part on your website, and I think it's so inspiring. I really like it. I don't know if you guys did you did you see that, but I just shared on the chat, and I think you all need to look at it. <laughs> Thank you, Matilda. I was looking at that too, Matilda. I love it. I I like it better than a bio. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, super <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, kind of the same reason I, I shared that uh, the tweet, uh, the pinned tweet at the time when I was building the website, I was uh, I was trying to to take a, a deep look in the mirror and and ask myself why I'm doing this, why I want to to stop uh, living like uh, the normal life I lived until today where art was just, uh, let's say, a part of me where I invested a lot of private time, but I was not sharing with anybody my practice and the outputs and the reasons. And then I say, okay, this is a part of me and that's probably the part of me that's the, the most authentic and also the, the one that makes me more happy and that's what I want to do and that's why I want to do. Just Let's just write down and do not forget why I'm doing this. And and yeah, I'm I'm so so glad that I, I did that because at the end of the day, it, uh, it empowered me to to trust myself and have faith and invest in this uh, in this new part that was so successful beyond any point of my imagination. That uh, that now empowered me living the life I want and be more, let's say, a wholesome person to a certain degree. It's absolutely beautiful, Stefano. Just read, just reading it now. Thanks, thanks so much for yeah, for sharing and yeah, being you know open and vulnerable and you know as, as you sort of touched on before the kind of you know the safe space of vertical crypto in a, a space which doesn't always um, you know support those tendencies. It, it really counts for a lot. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's absolutely true, and I want to say this again. It's not easy to to find this kind of safe space. Uh, they are there, and personally, I think I was uh, very lucky because uh, 
I received no amount of hate and no kind of pressure from anybody when I entered this space. Uh, but I know from some other fellows, generative artists that uh, were kind of uh, behind the spotlight, uh, especially when uh, the crypto market went first crazy and then kind of crashed uh, in October, November, December, that they received a lot of pressure from collectors like uh, about the utility of the art, about the pricing collapsing and so on. And that's uh, uh, that's another layer of stress it can be easily overwhelming uh, as an artist, especially when uh, when you kind of feel you are in the middle of everything. Uh, but uh, I think sharing my feelings there helped with me kind of creating deeper connection with people and uh, with collectors. And um, so I think uh, something I want to mention in, in October, Artblocks had. Um, a physical uh, exhibition in real life uh, in Marfa, in Texas, in the U.S. And I traveled there and I got to meet uh, people I knew just uh, from Discord and so on in real life. And uh, I was uh, so touched by a lot of people that were relating to to my words, but my art uh, in a very genuine way. And they gave me, gave back to me a lot of love and uh, a lot of happiness and uh, like... Uh, made me feel the emotion they got from the art I created, and was uh, it was incredible. And uh, so, if you if you find those kind of people, if you find those kind of collectors, uh, just uh, try to kind of really create a personal uh, connection with them and a personal connection with those community and those people, because those are the people that will support you no matter what, uh, not only economically but also as a, as a person and. Uh, and don't be afraid of uh, being vulnerable and being human because at the end of the day, we're all human. But sometimes in this space, uh, uh, it's it's forgotten because uh, uh, we focus so much uh, uh, on the, the economical aspect of NFTs and uh, especially like with the big ups and downs that we have in crypto that might be a bit toxic if you do not guard yourself uh, from those environments and those kind of uh, dynamics. But having those support people, it's uh, it's very helpful, like probably when you are under, uh, I don't know, a bad timing and so on, you always have this kind of uh, safe uh, circle where you can go, go back and just focus again on the art. Stefano, can I can I ask you another question regarding the prints? Yeah, um, sure. If that's okay. Um, do you? I, I was just wondering, like, when you create a piece, you know, on the computer, da -da, um, do you finish it on the computer, or do you often like, you know, print it and then look at it in large scale and uh, how that reads, and then and then judge whether it's finished or not, and then go back, or is it is it? Um, is the workflow that is if you finish it on the computer and that's that's the that's the image and then everything comes yep, after. Usually, mm -hmm. uh, usually I I just finish it on the computer, uh, but then uh, we have this endless question: when a work is really finished and when it's a work in progress. But most of the time, yes. Uh, once I I decide to print something, I I do not uh, edit anymore the work. Uh, but that's something probably I want to to be more flexible about it in the future, trying to to have more like this mixed media, maybe even, I don't know, paint or something more tangible on top of the generative work. And uh, one thing that's really helped me is uh, I have uh, like uh, I've purchased a Samsung Frame TV. And uh, when I feel a piece is kind of uh, completed, I... I put there the piece and I try to, to imagine how it would be uh, printed. Of course, it's not the same thing because still you have like a, a screen that's not as organical and uh, intangible as a piece of paper. Uh, but on the other hand, at least from, let's say, the size perspective, it helps a little bit more uh, imagining it uh, and seeing it in a, in a more uh, blown up scale. Um, yeah, this answer your question. Absolutely. Thank you.
no problem. And yeah, uh, maybe something I can I can share with you. It's uh, it's kind of a work in progress and very very early stage. But uh, yeah, I was mentioning I want to to kind of uh, experiment a bit more with uh, with the physical world, and I will be probably doing uh, um, a ceramic project uh, in the upcoming months, probably in, uh, in autumn. It will be ready and uh, released. But the idea is trying to experiment a bit more uh, with generative art, not only uh, in the digital form, but also in the, the real uh, life space. Uh, because uh, uh, one thing I really appreciate about computers is that uh, the randomness is not truly randomness. There's always a way to, to kind of reproduce that. And on one hand, it's amazing because at the end of the day, you can... Uh, if you follow all the, the steps, uh, you will always have the same output and the same images and so on. But on the other hand, it's uh, it's a bit too perfect. Meanwhile, in real life, uh, if there's a certain degree of randomness, uh, you will not be able to reproduce that once again. So I will try to explore in this project a bit more about this, trying to create this ceramic form and ceramic bodies where uh, uh, there will be uh, a randomness uh, in the process that won't be uh, replicable in, uh, in, um, in the future. I'd love to hear more about how you're translating that into the, like a ceramic process, if you don't mind, if you're able to say any more about it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I can say a bit more, but uh, again, it's very, very early stage. So uh, I don't yet have, let's say, a, a full view of how it will be. I, will, I started uh, discussing this with more like a technical person from the ceramic uh, uh, word where they will be able to say me yes this is doable this is not doable but basically the idea will be i will use an algorithm uh, to create an nft that uh, will try to represent the the perfect uh, uh, ideal scenario where uh, the shape and the colors and so on of the the final piece will look like and then i will try to replicate uh, those shapes in the real world but uh, there's a caveat. Those shapes are not possible to be made in the real world uh, for uh, technical constraints of ceramics. Let's say, imagine you have uh, a cube and it's a, a closed cube and so on. The way the ceramic will, uh, will be cooked and uh, will, be, will get dry will not uh, allow the cube to exist because it will be broken by the, uh, the elastic elasticity of the, the material and so on. And when the thing will be cooked, probably there will be something that goes wrong on purpose, like a crack or a, it will collapse and so on. And that will be the, the second part of the uh, of the generative art experience. And that's kind of the idea. Of course, now I need to understand what are those constraints so I can leveraging, leverage those without uh, having a piece at the end of the day. Uh, it's not possible to make. Interesting. So it's kind of a um, how, do I, how do I explain it? My my partner is a, a, a ceramicist. It's her like mm -hmm. her art, artistic practice. That's why I'm I'm a little bit interested. So is it sort of almost like the the generative like the real world generative side of things is kind of a you're almost expecting the cracking or the yes uh, hopefully not blowing up in the kiln because obviously <laughs> if things are built a certain way they'll literally just explode. Um, but almost like a, a uh, interface between digital and physical in a kintsugi uh, type of way. If you're familiar with that term, uh, I guess so. Uh, I don't re like. Is it the the broken vase? Uh... Yeah, it's a it's the Japanese ceramic practice of sort of taking broken pieces and putting them back yeah. together and using gold. For those who don't know, uh, using gold to sort of like highlight those cracks uh, in a way. Um, it to sort of like elevate the imperfections and the brokenness and that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, kind of the 
the philosophy be- behind it. Uh, like my goal at the end of the day will be having this kind of uh, final uh, ideal piece uh, that's just digital and then try to replicate that without uh, any kind of uh, addition to the end process. So let's say I will try to replicate this cube, this perfect cube, put it in the oven, and then let's hope it doesn't explode. Of course, I need somebody that's more (laughs) expert than me to avoid anybody getting injured. But uh, ideally, the pay piece that will be coming out from the claim will be uh, that piece without any addition from humans or anything else. Amazing. But, uh, cool. Yeah, more than happy to more than happy to chat more about it and uh, maybe also share it please with your partners if you have any idea or feedback, more than happy to hear this. Yeah, it's uh, she's actually wanting to get into that sort of like I mean her practice is obviously very physical. For obvious reasons, uh, she's wanting to get into uh, NFTs, and we've been kind of exploring like photogrammetry on sort of like translating her uh, ceramic physical pieces into a sort of three D digital way without like having to like painstakingly remodel everything. Uh, but I'll message you on on uh, Twitter because I think she'll be super interested to kind of see that interface in a totally different practice. So this is a really really cool. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Would love to discuss more. We usually ask to our uh, mentors if they have any kind of advice uh, they want to give to, you know, to our residents. And uh, since you are, uh, you know, a well-known uh, generative artist, Stefano, I think it would be great. Also, because we have here Anubis that uh, also works sometimes uh, uh, with generative mm-hmm. art. I don't want I don't want to create a label on you, Anubis, of course. But we also have another. Uh, I think another two artists, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. And uh, I, I think it would be great to to hear more about, you know, something that you struggle with at the beginning or even, I don't know, uh, kind of, yeah, a little bit of guidance if you want to, of course. Yeah, sure. Uh, so let's say I, I'm, I'm on your side, so I don't feel myself uh, a mentor by any name. But on the other side, uh, what I can share that uh, some lesson I learned, sometimes the art way, uh, first uh, for sure is uh, find your own balance uh, in creating uh, and uh, also uh, publishing and sharing your works and so on. It's okay to take a step back. It's okay to pause your artistic creativity. It's okay to be blocked and do not feel creative at all. And uh, probably those advices are are a bit of cliche, but uh, a thing I tried to do at the beginning of this year, there's this still con- January where basically every day of January you have uh, a generative art prompt. And I I was actually so keen on doing that and having like the perfect uh, month at the end of the month uh, that I got a bit too, uh, too carried away and I prioritized that over my mental health and uh, my physical health sometimes as well. Uh, because it was a, a very crazy uh, time for me at the, at the time because I I was uh, releasing one project with Flamingo Dao. Uh, there was also the, the vertical crypto art uh, auction. And on top of that, I was moving back from Germany to Italy. Uh, so I was kind of uh, in the move. and uh, But still, I tried to find time to to create art every single day. Uh, with a prompt that sometimes is not as easy as just uh, uh, having your imagination doing something, but it's more like guided ways of uh, creating. And it was too much. Um, and I was uh, I arrived at the end of January. I succeed with uh, the, the stupid idea of uh, doing everything. Uh, but the cost was that I was so tired that I was no longer able to to do art. And uh, on the other hand, I decided to to try and experiment the opposite way and force myself to to not create anything for the whole month of February. Uh, 
uh, and yeah, extremes don't work in either way because I arrived last week of February that was very, very frustrated because I could not uh, uh, create art just because I was imposing myself these kind of limits. But it was very, very uh, inspiring and made me really realize and understand that uh, it's okay to have your own piece. It's okay not to force yourself. It's okay to, to, to do things at your times and so on. Um, having said so, I feel uh, like, uh, of course, again, maybe a bit of a cliche, but quantity over quality, it's very helpful, especially when you're starting out and uh, just don't compare yourself to other and try to do your best to create as much possible works as you can, especially in generative art. Uh, it's very easy to, to get stuck in a technique or get stuck in, a, in an algorithm because the, of the potential infinite ways of... Uh, uh like creating art and uh, seeing art uh, but on the other hand uh if you feel stuck and uh, uh there's something a bug or something especially for generative art that you cannot uh, uh solve just uh close your computer take a walk and or start a fresh project once you're back and that's very helpful to to kind of uh couple of hours later or days later to go back and solve the problem from a first perspective. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, there's anybody here that was uh, a software developer or is a software developer, um, but there's this kind of uh, thing that happened to a lot of people that I know that are software developers that uh, you go to bed with uh, a very bad bug that you cannot solve in any hour, you know, in any ways, and then you wake up like at 4 a.m. with the solution in your mind. And it's frustrating because uh, that's uh, a bit of an inconvenient time to to figure out how to solve a bug. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's also nice to, to kind of uh, break away from the practice. And, um, yeah, I guess uh, that's kind of uh, the, the advice uh, I can give you. So uh, find your time, find your voice, find your community and be always aware of, uh, of your limits and surroundings and so on. And, Try to protect yourself, especially uh, on Twitter and so on. It's okay. And uh, per probably I'm the, the least person you should ask to about social media because I'm very, very bad at it. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's okay to, to step away for one week, one month, whatever. Uh, just let your art speak for yourself and don't worry too much about uh, the pressure that comes with people demanding things from you. Uh, it's uh, it's your job to create art because you have a calling. It's not your job to create art for people. That's beautiful. Thank you, Stefano. Oh, Chris, you were saying something. Sorry. No, no, I just unmuted. Um, Stefano, thank you so much for sharing that story. I um, I think I maybe miss uh from your one of your answers earlier. Uh, whether you're still working as a UX UI designer or if you've left that completely to go uh, art full time. No, I, I'm i not working anymore uh, in, the, in the traditional sense. I'm just uh, focusing myself fully on art uh, since January. And that's probably also um, kind of part of the story because uh, I used to be uh, a freelance for pretty much all my career until uh, early 2020 when I decided to take, start a new adventure in my life and move to Berlin, I found uh, myself uh, for a very first time, a full-time job. And uh, then of course, as everybody know, uh, COVID it and uh, things like life, uh, mm -hmm. pretty much everybody got their life changed uh, to a certain degree. And personally, I found myself uh, being in a new country without like the, net, the supporting network that I have here in Italy. And uh, I was enjoying a lot working uh, with my colleagues uh, and in my team. But on the other hand, was uh, I was not fit for the, the corporate life or the nine to five mm -hmm. job. And that really propelled me uh, toward the artistic life and saying, OK, this is uh, my my way of escaping reality, like the, the reality I was living in where I was uh, feeling isolated and uh, lonely but also worried for my family here in Italy for the whole uh, COVID situation. And then 
uh, yeah, then fast forward uh, uh, during 2021, where uh, I started being successful in NFTs, and that allowed me to, to quit my job. And uh, from the 1st of January 2022, I'm a full-time artist. It, it sounds like, um, thank you for sharing your, your experiences there. Um, it sounds like it was almost like a no-brainer for you. The reason I, that I ask is I'm a um, product designer, like a UX UI designer myself. Uh, working for a pretty large agency. I actually love my job. I'm like, I, I fit very well in here, but I'm also like my sort of like long term goal, life wise, I guess you could say, has always been to sort of like create art for a living. So I was just curious about like um, what that decision was like for you to sort of like move on from a career that you had put a lot of time and, you know, effort and thought and care into. Um, and I guess also, like, do you ever see yourself going back? Do you miss it now that you've been away for a little while? Yeah, that's a, a very good question and probably one of the most difficult decisions I needed to take in my life. Uh, so I think uh, the success of uh, with NFTs kind of uh, made me shift my perspective uh, from a... Uh, from quite, uh, like, from, like, it was quite a big shift in perspective. And uh, one thing that was really hard was uh, saying goodbye to the team because uh, I felt uh, that I found my, my co-workers. I was happy to work with them. And I felt like a sense of responsibility because they were leveraging on uh, my skills and vice versa. So it's what, it was not an easy decision. On the other hand, uh, the fact that I was uh, uh, forced to to spend my days working from for something that was not really something that was fulfilling me, not from a professional perspective, because I was very happy with my job and so on, but more from a, a personal or emotional perspective, I felt it was not uh, I was not really uh, following my my sense of. Uh, purpose in life uh, and generally in creating uh, something that's uh, that's not really for business and not really for selling things and um, on the other hand uh, when I took the, the decision uh, I felt uh, liberated and there was of course a transitional period when it where it was not so easy to to shift from uh, a traditional, more uh, work environment to a more dynamic and uh, less regulated uh, lifestyle that the artist one. Um, now that has been a while that I'm focusing on this, I can say for sure two things. Yes, I miss it, uh, but uh, in a healthy way. It's more like uh, I don't feel anymore the burden to, to do that job. So if somebody comes to me with asking me for help, like a design help or design feedback or a user experience, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, feedback or testing or whatever, I'm more than happy to jump in and I have found, again, the exciting man to, to be involved in that space, in that area. And uh, and the, the second part, I kind of forgot what I was saying. Um, but yeah, uh, Oh yeah, sure. I am actually working more and more harder and more probably stressed nowadays than I was uh, earlier on, but that's part of the game. It's like a positive stress and uh, a positive uh, thing that I can keep myself so busy. And again, what I was sharing earlier, having another person that kind of helps me manage everything, it's uh, fundamental. Uh, but uh, even if I wake up earlier than before and I go to bed, later than before i feel that uh, whatever the the outcome whether the result is achieved or not i'm happy to to invest uh, my time and my energy in this it's kind of like uh, uh i'm not sure if you're familiar with the ikigai term uh, i think that japanese as well where you find like the perfect thing where you can uh, you're feeling fulfilled you can have economic returns uh, and so on, but pretty much if you find the, the work that you like, you won't work one single day in your life. And that's where I find myself today. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the, the whole thing. Uh, thank you, Dylan. Uh, so uh, it was a hard decision, but uh, I'm so glad I took it and I never looked back.
Yeah, uh, it's funny. Uh, Icky guy has come up in my world last and like maybe the last week or two. I'm not sure where, but uh, I've definitely heard that term before. I think that's always been a goal. I think for myself, anyways, to just have a job that doesn't feel like a job where you're just excited to do it anyway. Um, so that definitely resonates with me for sure. It sounds like the decision was sort of like, like I said earlier. I think one that was uh, almost too obvious to make, despite like. Obviously, it's still a hard decision to make, but um, it, it felt. It sounds like it felt quite natural to you. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, that's probably the worst part uh, of everything because uh, uh, it was a no-brainer. I, I, I was already kind of uh, uh, being successful in the world NFT space, and uh, uh, I was uh, feeling a hundred percent involved, and I just wanted to do that. But on the other hand. Uh, uh, it felt it made me feel feel a bit guilty about uh, uh, leaving my team and leaving uh, the people I was working with since the past two years. Um, but and so I kind of pushed uh, the decision for uh, pretty uh, pretty much too much time that uh, uh, that was needed. But once uh, I I said to everyone, "Hey, look, I'm I'm quitting because I I found my passion. I found." Uh, uh, the dream job, pretty much. Everybody was so supportive and uh, so happy for me. So that was also a very positive part of the experience because I I was lucky enough to have uh, all my coworkers uh, supporting me, even though uh, it would have been a, a big challenge for them to to say goodbye to me from a let's say professional perspective. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stefano. Uh, do we have any other questions or comment? I think we have uh, time for uh, one last question for, for our guest. It's me again. Hi, Stefano. Maybe um, what um, what be interesting to you is you know like because you've done the cohort and um, you've ob obviously done the auction, uh, and we are heading towards the auction in a few weeks. Um, do you have any advice for that part of 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 the journey of this residency? Hmm, very good question. And uh, my advice, again, would be uh, do your best uh, job and work to represent uh, your emotions and your feelings toward the world experience. Uh, personally, for me, uh, the Peace I Auction was uh, an algorithm that I created to, to give to uh, important people in my artistic experience in life and uh, vertical crypto art was definitely the, the number zero of this uh, uh, algorithm. Um, so yeah, I tried to, to take the feeling, uh, the energy I felt from this whole uh, uh, experience and put it into my work. Um, and then uh, probably a bit of regret uh, from my side again is I did not uh, had the time I wanted to have to to be involved as much as possible in the work process. Um, like I know that uh, people were building the RM spaces and I I kind of observed that and felt so much fun from the outside that I felt I wanted to be part of the inside, but uh, I had no time. And then uh, enjoy, enjoy a lot, enjoy your success, enjoy the, the fact that you made it to the end, enjoy the connection you have made. And uh, and yeah, I'm very looking forward to, to be in the event. Hopefully I can join and jump around and dance around and uh, see you, everybody in the, in the vertical uh, area space. Well, thanks. See you there, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we can end here our AMA session if you are okay with that.
Stefano, I just want to say that uh, it was amazing and uh, we all love your honesty and your uh, wise advice that you gave us today. So thank you so much for being us today. And always remember that once a resident, always a resident. So even if you lost something uh, because of the time, but you know, this is uh, yeah uh, something that goes on. So yeah, thank you so much, Stefano. Thank you, Matilda. And yes, it was uh, absolutely a pleasure for me. Uh, feel free to reach out at any time if you have any questions. Uh, want any feedback or anything or uh, even just to say hi um i'm not sure if uh, it came out uh, before matilde but uh, uh, something i'm really looking forward to is meeting as many people uh, in real life as possible from this space so if there's any kind of uh, chance uh, or events or so on you're taking part and maybe you hear your name or see my art or whatever just take a picture send it to me let's meet and let's have fun in real world as well Sure, sure. Thank you, Stefano. Thank you, all you guys, for being here today. And yeah, enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. all. Bye -bye. Thanks, Stefano.